Hey everyone, how's it going? This is the Bald Metal Nerd coming at you with another lovely uh, video. This is going to be a semi-response to uh, Chris at Dixieland Farms. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about his premise uh, that he basically often thinks that debut albums uh, can often be a band's best work because the basic premise of that theory is, uh, and it's logical if you really think about it, um, a band has all of the time in the world to create their debut album, right? If it takes them 10 years to create a, a perfect day, it doesn't matter. They could take as long as they need to create as good of a debut album as humanly possible. And I think that's true in some cases and false in others, as we're going to kind of go over here in uh, these examples that, that I'm about to, to show off. So... Um, Let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to show, first I'm going to start off by showing an album where clearly their debut album is the best thing they've ever done and they'll never ever remotely approach the summit ever again and it completely supports this thesis. So we're going to start with the affirmative, Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. Is, are the use your, your are the use your illusion albums anywhere near as good as this? Hell no, not even close. This is a true masterpiece. Guns N' Roses will never, ever, ever in a billion years even getting spitting distance to this ever again. It just just won't happen ever. So there you go. This this here case closed. Well, not so fast. I'm gonna show off a couple albums here that I would say completely disprove that theory, right? Um, first of all, I'm going to show off. Uh, most of these albums are three, mostly three albums into their career, or at least a couple albums into their career. Uh, first one we're going to show off is Monster Magnet Dopes to Infinity. This is where Monster Magnet really found their sound and their first two albums are good, and they're they're not bad, but this is album number three, and it's really where they completely, you know, totally found their sound, and the whole template for the rest of their career up to this point. Album number three, it took a little while for them to find their footing. Another example, Alice Cooper, Killer. Uh, the first thing he ever put out, uh, Pretties for You. Not even worth talking about. And Easy Action was just not there. Just, in my opinion, not all that good. But this one is the third album. Fantastic. Right? So it took Alice three albums, really, in my opinion, to find his footing. Well, him and the rest of his band, you know, the Alice Cooper band. But um, another one White Zombies, uh, Lost Extra CISO. Uh, before this, in my opinion, White Zombie produced literally no music of value. Um, everything they produced before this, because I've heard it, in my opinion, was utter crap. Just unlistenable crap. Whereas this is great, along with Astro Creep 2000, and I enjoy the Rob Zombie solo stuff too, but um, this again was just like album number three or something. Found their footing there. And then, of course, the last one I'm going to show, whoa, show off. Now, uh, again, this is a similar case to where I don't think the albums before were bad, but again, found their footing, Sepultura beneath remains, right? So there you go. Because when you think of Sepultura, you're not going to tend to think of schizophrenia first, right? Just not. So uh, that, that, to me, we did a little bit of, you know, one thing in support, and then I just totally, uh, you know, in my opinion, showed, no, that's definitely not the case. Now, I'm going to show off some groups of albums where I think it could be argued easily that the first and second albums are kind of equally good. So, of course, we're going to start with a real easy one. We're going to go with uh, Black Sabbath and Paranoid. Is Paranoid better than Black Sabbath? Not really. It, it, it is, you know, I mean, it, 
maybe you could make an argument that one is better than the other, but you're splitting hairs. Um, another one where it could be argued that they're equally good, I do prefer one over the other, is Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden versus Killers. I probably do slightly prefer Killers, but not by a wide margin. Uh, again, splitting hairs. Let's see. Whoops, those were some wrong ones. <laughs> I accidentally grabbed uh, the wrong album off the shelf uh, for this next one. I got Machine Head's second album, uh, The More Things Change. I don't have Burn My Eyes right here. All right. I do have it, but it's on the shelf. I accidentally grabbed the wrong wrong one when I was grabbing it off the shelf. I think one could make the argument that, just pretend this has burned my eyes, that it's slightly better than The More Things Change, but I think they're still both pretty good. So maybe they did have a tiny bit of sophomore slump on this, but I'd say they were roughly equal as far as quality goes. Uh, next up. This one uh, depends on how you break it down. Uh, here we have Nine Inch Nails' first release, Pretty Hate Machine. Now, does there, is their second album Broken, which is an EP, or is it the Downward Spiral, right? Now, on this one, obviously I feel the Downward Spiral is better than either one of these. I mean, this is, this is Trent's absolute masterpiece. These are quite good, but this is the best thing Trent's ever done. So, I guess album number three, roughly. So, so that, that kind of blows up uh, what I was showing there. But another, another uh, set of albums where one could argue that they're roughly equally good. Overkill's first two. Uh, you know, Feel the Fire and Taking Over. I'd say they're pretty close to equal. Now, uh, one, this one here I'm going to show, uh, there's definitely a step up from one to the next, uh, but they're both quite good. We got Skid Row's self-titled debut, which is awesome. Then we have Slave to the Grind, which I do prefer, and I do think it's somewhat better. But one could make the argument either way, just depending on your personal taste, which one of these is better. And then lastly, uh, this next one I'm going to show off is completely subjective. And uh, as far as which one you prefer, I think is going to be entirely in the eye of the beholder. And that is Undertow and Enema from Tool. Which one you like better is going to depend on you. As far as which one I prefer, depends on the day of the week. Uh, there are times when I prefer Enema, and then there are times I prefer Undertow, right? So, what does that show? Nothing. So now, <laughs> now I'm going to show off a group of albums where there's no doubt that the second album that this band produced, much, much, a huge improvement over their first one. So, first one I'm going to show off, Anthrax Spreading the Disease. Um, way better than Fistful of Metal. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that. Next to Fear Factory, we got Soul of a New Machine, which is their debut in D-Manufacture. Everyone's going to agree that D-Manufacture is better. It's not even a question. Nirvana Nevermind. Is this better than Bleach? Yes. <laughs> um, here's an exceedingly easy one. Jews Priest, Sad Wings of Destiny. Total ma ma uh, metal classic versus Rock Rolla. Mediocre classic rock. Yeah, this uh, second album definitely beats the shit out of their first. Uh, next one. Now, there... On these next couple of albums, there's not quite the gulf as some of the other ones. But we're going to show these two. I think most Megadeth fans would agree P-Cells is better than Killing Is My Business. They're both great, but P-Cells does edge it out. Next up, I've only got two more examples. We're getting, we're getting towards the end. We got Kill Em All and Ride the Lightning. Everyone's going to say Ride the Lightning is a better album. Except for that one weird contrarian guy, and then uh, and then lastly, we're going to uh, show off here the last example, and I think this is a pretty clear one too. We got Nevermore's debut versus the Politics Ecstasy. 
much, much better album. So, looking at all this, have I, by, by showing all of these examples, have I disproven Chris's uh, theory and, and just flung it down into the ocean and shit all over it and say, I have proven you wrong? No, of course not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because there is definitely some validity to what he said. Um, and there are many examples of bands that have the sophomore slump, as it were. Um, I think it's more common in, in, in certain genres of music. So, Chris, you obviously are listening to the wrong types of music. I don't know what's wrong with you. But, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, it could definitely be true for some bands, but I've noticed for a lot of bands, it almost seems like the opposite is true. Like, their debut album is a bit weak, and then they do something way better further down. And I think the corollary to the debut album and having all the time to write it, I think the reason that a lot of times their second or third albums can be better is because, you know when they released their debut album, they're still essentially a baby band, right? Um, maybe that, you know, obviously, maybe they've performed some live shows. Uh, they've practiced, they've written, but they don't have, you know, that constant um, exposure that they get when they really start to develop their career, right? So before an album, a band even puts out their debut album, they're a baby band, and then they put out their debut album, and then, essentially, they get the feedback from that album, they're playing the shows live, they see what reactions they get, and very often they hone their songwriting craft even more, uh, you know, for their second or third album. I think that's what leads sometimes to... Second or third albums being a lot better. But, again, the sophomore slump can definitely happen, and sometimes the debut album is absolutely the best thing ever because I just showed the most famous example ever with Guns N' Roses. Um, another band that I can think of that I didn't show, but I do have the CD, uh, Three Doors Down, Better Life. I think that's the best album they ever did. Maybe Godsmack's debut. So there are some other examples in my collection of bands that their debut was the best thing. But... I think it's largely a your mileage may vary, and I don't have a definitive answer. I just wanted to talk about this topic. So let me doubt, know down in the comments below if you agree or disagree with any of these examples or my reasoning or anything. The whole baby band hypothesis, whatever. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Live long and prosper.